And good morning, and we are back. Just had to take a quick little drink break, and we're be, we're back with Portia Barry Kilby. She is joining us. I am so excited to have her here. She joined us at the passing of our Queen Elizabeth, and I say our Queen because I was such an admirer of our dear Queen Elizabeth. And Portia is going to be talking all things pop culture with me this morning. I've been following this news article and this news series, if you will, by, you know, the woe is me couple who don't want to be followed by the paparazzi and just want a private life. Yet they do a Netflix series. Are you kidding me, people? Really? Harry and Megs? You complain about the United States. You complain about the UK. Where are you happy? Are you happy at all? Clearly you're not. So why don't you go to Canada? Anyway, I'm bringing over Portia. <laughs> and I see you're laughing at me. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Eden. Thanks for having me on. Uh, welcome back at Common Sense America. How are you doing in the UK? How are things doing over there? I'm doing well, thank you. Always taking solace from the fact that Meghan and Harry are on your side of the pond. Uh, so <laughs> commiserations for that. Oh, well, thanks, Portia. <laughs> I tell you what. I don't know where to start with these two. You know, I, when I reached out to you and I wanted to talk about this story, I've been listening to Meg and Kelly's podcast, and I swear every day it's something about Meg's. And I sat there and was just kind of taking it in. She has so many different aspects of the victimization of Meg's and the paparazzi of Meg's. And, you know, I, I kept thinking, woe is me, that Bible verse, woe is me. And Megs is so much, she creates her own controversy and her own PR stunts. And, and yet Harry co compares her to his mother, Princess Diana. There is no comparison. I have been longer alive than Megs and followed Diana from the very beginning, remembering when I was five years old, sitting on our dining room, living room floor, watching Princess Diana get married. Uh, Lady Diana Spencer get married to become princess. And I have been watching it since then. And, you know, as I continue to ramble on, I'm just kind of like, I, I noticed the reviews on Netflix 2.2 <laughs> and then his book and then his book Spare, which is coming out. I'm thinking Spare Tire, <laughs> Spare Change, you know, and that, and that has a 2.2 review on Goodreads. And I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> you guys, are you guys poor now? Are you looking for money? Okay, enough of my banter. What are your thoughts from the other side of the pod? <laughs> I mean, I think they are very much the same as your thoughts, Eden. And it is always encouraging to hear uh, someone from the US also speak common sense. Because I think there is this kind of hype around Meghan Markle on your side of the pond. Um, that, oh, no, she's been so hard done to, uh, so hard done by. And meanwhile, we're like, hang on a minute, are we talking about the same lady? So it's always refreshing to hear someone share <laughs> our view. No, thank you. Uh, Portia, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, I think it's mad. It's as though all of the allegations stem from seemingly wanting to escape all of this media and the following and the awful tabloids but mm -hmm. private life no oh no are you there um, you're breaking up a little bit you're you're uh, a little pixelated and you, it's every other word i'm getting from you okay are you there Okay, you there? Okay. Can okay. Look at me now. And now I can hear you. I am. Yes. Hopefully it works. But yeah, I was just saying, Eden, how it's mad that the whole narrative has been we need to escape from the media and all of this limelight and control the narrative. They've fled to the US. That's not sufficient. They now want to promote their own narrative. But I thought they'd already done that through the book that Spare, through the Oprah interview. It's like, when do you stop? Is a Netflix series of hours long footage. Will that satisfy them in the telling of Megan's truth? I'm not convinced it will, because it seems as though nothing is going to satisfy this pair who just want to, I don't know, wreak havoc um, against their own family. 
Yeah, and that's what I see. I sit there and look at how Prince William and Catherine of Wales came to the United States about a week ago. And, you know, they were with the John F. Kennedy Library. They were with mm -hmm. Ambassador Caroline Kennedy. They were doing this huge event um, in regards to the earth and a lot of his patron um, organizations that he supports. And it, they were just so beautifully done and it's so humbled. And then the Netflix series just happens to drop and that stupid PR stunt just happens to drop while they're here. And you watch them in comparison to the lack of maturity that you see in Spare and Megs. And that spoke volumes to me with regards to the maturity of William and Catherine and how the royals are handling things. But let me ask you this from the UK standpoint, and having grown up in the monarchy and around it, what do you think their reactions will be? Are they even allowed to say anything about what is taking place or do they have to remain very quiet? Hey, Port, did you hear me, Portia? Well, I'd imagine that the royal staff, as you have that fixed documentary, and yes, so I think it will be very painful for the royal family to watch. Mm -hmm. It's their son or brother coming out and making all of these allegations against them. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine that it's not going to be happy viewing at all. Um, but at the same time, they can make a statement on it. It'll be interesting to see if any is made. I don't think any will be, because I think it's really just self-destructive. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to promote their side, but it's backfiring with seeing the loopholes in their arguments. And mm -hmm. it's not exactly winning anyone over. It's the same rehashed allegations they made on Oprah, they made before. Um, it's not, yeah, I don't know what their goal is apart from getting their story out again and again, because mm -hmm. they're definitely not winning any new followers around. No, no, they're really not. Uh, one thing I admire about William and Catherine is their loyalty to the monarchy. And one thing, I, another thing I admire is the second year in a row that Catherine is putting on this Christmas event to honor the queen, of, obviously, this year. Have you, what are your thoughts on that and just how she presents herself uh, to the UK and just her leadership and her compassion? I think with um, Princess Catherine, you have chalk and cheese when you look at her and then Meghan Markle. You have someone who knows what is expected of her. And I'm sure um, Catherine would want to do many other things with her time, but she doesn't. She puts the job and the duty first and foremost of her life, of her family's life. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you have Meghan doing, oh, whereas me, as you said, I feel this way. I thought it would be that way. That mm -hmm. isn't the point of the royal family. That's not the mm -hmm. point of the crown. You should always come last in that setup. Mm -hmm. So I think Kate Catherine uh, has exemplified that. Uh, she has put duty before her own personal whims and she at least appears to enjoy it, which mm -hmm. is always helpful, but I'm sure there are tough days. And yet at the same time, day after day, she carries out her tasks and duties and with seeming like, pers like so kind, the personal interactions that are caught on social media are beautiful. And this mm -hmm. is someone who's really putting others first. And yes, it's always easy to behave on camera. It's not so easy to behave on camera when cameras are watching you so much of your day. So really, she is an exemplary figure and a good role model, I think, for many. Yes, she is a phenomenal role model. I will tell you that. Let me ask you this, and I know there are rumors swarming. I was looking at the news headlines this morning. Do you think uh, Princess Catherine is in fact pregnant with her fourth? Ooh, I, I somehow <laughs> doubt it. I don't want to be too ageist, um, but I guess statistically the odds would maybe be against her. But if she is, I think that's wonderful. I think that it's always good for people to have large families rather than we need to save the planet as Meghan and Harry opted for. <laughs> Well, that's fun. I'm glad you brought that up because as they indeed want to save the planet, 
you know, they talk about saving the planet and yet they take these private jets that put out all of this toxic fuel as they would see it. And it's such a contradictory of what they quote stand for as they get the ripple of hope award from the Robert F. Kennedy humane, you know, uh, organization. It just doesn't, everything is just so contradictory to quote what they stand for. It, it's somewhat of an annoyance. And, you know, as they dropped this Netflix series at Christmas, I felt like they were dropping coal versus anything but gifts. <laughs> I mean, yes. seriously. And it's like so much so, like they're saying they want to save the planet. Well, how about you start closer to home and save your family and just value, try and aim at reconciliation? That The chance of that seems impossible when you're sold out to Netflix and profiting from family drama. I think mm. quite rightly that would destroy the most normal of families, let alone one that really does depend on public perception to a great extent for its functioning. You know, every time I, I see Harry, I think of mental health issues. He looks to Meg's, as Megan Kelly has cited, and I agree with her on this statement, as another mother figure. And that is, um, is, is really affecting, I think, his mental health. Because every time I see them in public, and I'll be the first to say, I'll, I'll cycle babble them all day long. And I sit there and look, and I'm like, this guy is really unhappy. And he used to be, his disposition, his demeanor used to be so much more at peace when he was with the, you know, the, the powerful threesome of William and Catherine and himself. And then his whole demeanor has changed. And she has such this control suction on him that he really, you know, he is not able to be his full self. What are your thoughts? I mean, I, I, I could psychobabble it. I have so many people who psychobabble with me. It's like, I know we have more important things to do, but this is seriously, that you know, you watch this kid lose his mom at 12 and then you see his father really kind of lead and guide him and be there for him. And then you see this, this guy, this adult raise two kids of his own and turn his back on his father, let alone the king, but his father. And you see such an unhappy person in modern day. What are your thoughts? I think, uh, like, I mean, for a start, I'm no psychologist, but it doesn't take a psychologist to observe the interactions at times. I think this is not a healthy guy speaking, or this at least isn't a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone in their right mind, anyone with some common sense would look at this and think, this is not going to actually help you in the long run as an individual man, as a father, as a husband, uh, mm. if you are going to support your wife's like kind of endeavor to destroy a family and mm. to seek the limelight after supposedly wanting privacy. I think if I were in his situation, I'd by all means retreat to California, but then live a peaceful and quiet life and mm -hmm. not care about the PR, don't conduct interviews. And to have kind of those two strains of thought going on at the same time of, I want out of here, but also, oh, let's support my wife in getting all of the glitz and the glam. There's clearly a wire twisted somewhere. And given like such an unfortunate childhood with his mother dying in that regard and the whole circumstances around that death, of course there's going to be problems. Um, but mm -hmm. definitely doesn't seem as though Meghan Markle is in any way helping those. No, she doesn't give me any, you know, warm, warm and fuzzies as being a mother or a nurturer. She, you know, she's just all very much about herself. And, and something else that Megan Kelly cited the other day was she wears her designer clothes to Harlem. And, you know, Harlem, <laughs> you know, I love, I love my New York City and I love all my boroughs. And I know Harlem is not the wealthiest place to go in your designer clothes. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I think there's also, I'm always very skeptical of people um, when they have a lot of money and they opt for this very minimalist interior design and it's like 50 shades of beige. It's like you have such a rich cultural heritage behind you that Harry does as a member of the royal family. It's like, this is what you are willing to opt for. This, mm -hmm. it shows, I think, what sense of priority is and very peculiar taste, which I'm just immediately don't trust. Yes. Bias, but <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that that's kind of Megan's kind of personality is beige, 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 so that she can just project herself ever more vividly among yeah. the 
Uh, you know, I'll be interested to if you have you watched the Netflix series at all? Have you taken, you know, spent those precious three hours of your life to watch that? <laughs> I refuse to support it. And I think Netflix is doing dirty work to be promoting this program, which is yes. and could cause damage to the royal family. So no, yes. I won't endorse it. But I watched the commentary around it and Megan Kelly was excellent on her critique. Yes. Um, far more worthwhile that was only 20 minutes of my time rather than three hours yeah exactly you know I actually canceled my Netflix subscription because they had decided to just really focus on such woke commentary and that's mm -hmm. not me and I'm not going to support and spend my whether it's six or seven dollars now or eight dollars I don't even know what it is for subscription anymore and you know and do that I'm just not doing that anymore and mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, like you said, I, I take my mental health walks and people laugh at me every time when I say that because I listen to Megan Kelly on my walks and it's just like how, you know, is it really a mental health walk? I'm like, yeah, it actually is because she talks about a lot of the, you know, the things that are facing our kitchen tables and our homes, mm -hmm. but yet a little pop culture thrown in there. Let me also ask you this, you know, you being in the UK and preparing for Christmas and, you know, the official King Charles aspect and the ceremonies that will go into that. What does that look like? And when is that coming down? When is that scheduled for? Are you do you know? So I guess the main thing to look out for would be the King's speech, which for my entire lifetime and for many people's lifetime, it's always been the Queen's speech, but this yeah. speech will be addressed by uh, King Charles. And I think it's normally at three o'clock on Christmas Day. So uh, it's very common for households across the country to gather around the television and watch that uh, before moving on to other events. And it will be about 15 minutes. And I'd imagine a lot of it will focus on the late Queen and yes. on her death and on kind of the legacy that he has inherited. It will be fascinating if he mentions Harry and Meghan, um, maybe in a throwaway line of my, you know, family, including Harry and Meghan over in the US, supporting their move um, mm -hmm. away from England. But mm -hmm. yes, I hope it won't feature them heavily. I think it will primarily be um, about uh, Queen Elizabeth. One thing I always loved about watching the Queen's delivery and her speech during the Christmas holiday was the pictures that she chose to surround mm -hmm. herself with. And every year it was something a little different. So last year it was Prince Philip, obviously, and, and his passing. And the years before that, it was, um, you know, Prince George and Prince William and Prince Charles. And as it, you know, continues on in that next generation, so it'll be interested to see what pictures he surrounds himself with for that address. And then the um, the crowning, the official crowning of him as king, when will that be happening? The that will be in May. So he'll okay. be coronated at some point in May. I'm forgetting the date, but okay. it will be a public holiday over here. So we'll all be able to take it off and watch accordingly and line the streets. Is that what you is that what happens? You line the streets when that happens, and what kind of festivities usually go along with that? It would ordinarily be people a fair number of people will flock to London and try and get around that area, so Westminster area, to see any carriage draw by, to see him, his whole entourage um, go past. So kind of for like a minute's glance or a moment's glance. Um, but I'm sure there'll be a big buzz there. And then more broadly across the UK, it will be screened on TVs, be it at home, sometimes the pub, if the pubs are open, which isn't necessarily going to be the case if it's bank holiday, but um, because they closed, for, most of them closed for the Queen's funeral, but some still stayed open and shows the proceedings. Um, so I don't know, but it, I think a lot of people will be very much behind him. And he said it will be a scaled down service in terms of the pomp and ceremony, but I, I hope it's not. I think people like the pomp of the British custom and it gives them a sense of pride. So hopefully he will pull out all of the stops. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I absolutely loved being in the UK when I was in college. And I remember all of those amazing pubs that we would go into and, you know, having the shepherd's pie and just the traditions over there and absolutely loving that. Gosh, what I wouldn't do to hop on a jet to come over and, you know, see the coronation of King Charles. I think that'd be absolutely fabulous. But on that note is I would love to have you back as we get closer to that time mm -hmm. period. And of course, as Spare really hits the market on 
in 2023 in January, if you would have come back after you've read it or, you know, perused it, we can break that down and see if the numbers have gone up at all. (laughs) Plummeted. Plummeted. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, there you go. Plummeted. Let's let's plan on that one. But until then, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you. And thank you so much for joining us here and talking about my pop culture (laughs) fetish with Megs and Harry. So I love you. Happy Christmas. Oh, thank you. Happy Christmas to you. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Portia. Bye-bye. Bye. And for all of those who are tuning in, it is just about the top of the hour. We're almost at 10 a.m. Eastern time here on Tuesday, here on Tuesday, December the 13th. And that was Portia Barry Kilby. She's a contributor for Young Voices UK. She's been here on this show many times. She was here to do the commentary on the Queen's passing and the ceremonies leading into it. And you can follow her on Twitter at Portia BK. And I tell you what, I look forward to having her back here on the show as we head into January. We can talk more pop culture and the spare tire. And then we can also um, hope to have her back here for the King's coronation in May. That will be quite the spectacular event. I love bringing these stories to you here at Common Sense America. I learn as much as you guys do on these kitchen table topics and things that are happening in and around our culture, good and bad, but I I had to make it a little lighthearted today on the Meg's Woe is Me feature. So 